All right, what's up? Let's go. Here we go. Rock and roll. I got to use that intro because I don't use it much anymore. On my I, videos. Like it. I, like it. <laughs> I use that. I'm going to use that on my live stream. <laughs> hey, everybody. I am here with my man, Brian, from Edgemere Bacon Tackle. Um, I appreciate him letting me come in and set up my stuff. And he actually had a backdrop for me. Ain't that awesome? Worked out perfectly. It was great. <laughs> um, before we get into everything, during Thanksgiving, um, this guy and this tackle shop did a pretty awesome thing. Um, you can get a little closer to the mic and uh, – Explain explain what happened during Thanksgiving. Yeah, for sure. So um, we've seen on Facebook that there's a retirement home right down the road from us that the caterer who did their Thanksgiving meals for the last umpteen years was unable to do it this year. So somebody made a post on Facebook and said, you know, there's 140 residents at St. Luke's Retirement Home that uh, they're not getting a Thanksgiving meal. So what we did was we made a post on our Facebook and said, look, you know, we, we can't let these people go without a Thanksgiving meal. This is a tight community. This is what we do. Let's all band together and uh and help these these you know seniors out. So um I, I contacted Miss Donna from Salin and uh you know we told her like, hey, you know, we're, we're gonna get donations, let's see what we can do, let's get these people meals. So um we made the post out and the whole community just came together. I mean, people were just walking in the door with pies and silverware, turkeys, um, you know cash donations and everything. So we ended up getting enough money to do the Thanksgiving dinner. And now we're also doing a Christmas dinner. Oh, well, that's, that's cool. Yeah. So Crossroad Bistros uh, teamed up with uh, Creekside Graphic and Teas, and they baked us uh, 15 pumpkin pies. Costas is up the road on the boulevard. They donated meals for the next day um, so they could eat two days in a row. It was just yeah, you know, Markley's Marina and Finna Hall Charter Boats, they, they, they brought down the apple pies and silverware. I mean, it, it was just a really awesome event. That's and, all, um, that's the way community comes together. Everybody came together. On it. Yeah, and I can't take the credit for it because everybody fishing for it. So it was a community thing that everybody should be happy with. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I, I seen it. That was kind of a really, really, really big thing. So It was awesome, man. It and, really was. And I don't even want to go, but next week you got something else really big happening. We do. Uh, December sixteenth at nine a.m. We have our uh, second. It's our second annual fishing rod giveaway. Um, the first year we did it, we gave away two hundred and seventy-two fishing rods, and um, it was just a great event. Santa Claus is here. Um, we free cookies, hot chocolate, candy canes, and uh, so this year we set a goal for five hundred fishing rods, and we got sponsors for it, and you know we run a raffle. All our proceeds from the raffle go to it, and we hit our goal of five hundred fishing rods. Um, this, this Saturday coming up, December 16th at 9 a.m., 500 fishing rods will be given away at the shop. Santa Claus will be here at 9 a.m. with the Grinch. With the Grinch? With the Grinch on a, <laughs> uh, gonna show up on a fire truck. And you're going to, and you're going to have like little, like, um, you said like hot chocolate and stuff yeah, like hot that. Hot chocolate cookies. Um, yeah, and a picture with Santa with our backdrop here. Backdrop. I get to use it first. That's right. <laughs> That's a cool deal. Bring your kids down. Um, they'll, they'll definitely want to give you, uh. Give your kid a free ride, man, and get him out fishing and get him off them damn computers. Well, it's the next generation of fishermen and women. You know yeah. I mean, we got we to pass the torch still. Well, how long, so far, how long have you been actually here now? This is our second year here. Our, our second year, and um, it, it's just the support from the community, the support from all the fishermen and, and women out there has just been outstanding. Because, I mean, I grew up five minutes from here. I grew, I'm a Dundalk boy, even though I live on Eastern Shore now. I grew up right, right down the road, so... The crabbing and everything, you go right down here to um, uh, um, got North Point State Park, you got Fort Howard, Fort Howard, the bridge, the um, the pier out there. Um, I was more, I did a little bit more up around the gunpowder because I was a bass fisherman. Okay, yep, yep. Um, but coming next year, next year, I mean, are, what other plans you got for the store? I know you got a couple, you know, stuff in here. You got a whole snakehead section over there. Yeah, and we're going. We got some lures here. We want to show you that he's the only. He's the only one that carries these. Um, frogs. He's got some frogs coming in here. We're going to talk about them in a second. Um, but do you have any other plans you guys got coming up that you want to set up for next spring? Um, so we uh, we finally got into with another distributor. Um, it's been requested a lot from us. We did our work the first year. We could get into it, but it was such a, a waiting list to get along with them. So we're we're happy to announce that we will be carrying finally tsunami. 
Tsunami. Everybody's been asking for Tsunami. So we will have Tsunami this year, and we will have the Andy Rods and the Convector combos as well. Okay. Um, so that's been a big thing. Uh, last year, our goal was to sell live spot. There's not many people around here to sell a live spot. Right. And so we made that happen. So we carried live spot all year long. The spot bite was phenomenal up in the harbor this year. As every fisherman that the rock fish. for rockfish knows. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't do much. Rock. I, w- I went out one time this year, and I, to me, I, I, when I stripe a fish, I do it a little bit because I'm a bass fisherman by heart. Yeah. So I stayed kind of shallow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like when I'm on the bay, I like when the in t- coming tight, when the tide's coming oh, in. Yeah, yeah. And I like hitting like major points, major points or secondary and throwing top orders, any kind of structure. Man, top, I didn't, I didn't get, so. I, did, I fished for five hours and not one bite in areas that I would really? I mean, just tear them up. And I, I did not get a bite that day. No, I was, it's funny you say it because this year was actually my best year I've ever had fishing. Well, I was coming down last weekend. You said you were, you killed them last year, oh, last, last weekend. Sunday, yeah. We went out with uh, Lenny Simmons on the Simonizer. Boy, let me tell you, he, he could put some fish on a boat. Kenny? Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's running trips up till uh, I think today's the last day, actually. But it, look, I'm going to throw him a plug right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, man. If, do what if you, you do. guys have a, a party of people, a work party, uh, you know, summer party, whatever, a group of friends just want to get out for a weekend, contact Lenny Simmons on the Simonizer or Tyler Williams on the Finaholic. They are the top guys, in my opinion. I fish with both of them. They, they're they a great, great boat to go with, both of them. If if you go on Facebook and you forgot who what his name is, just go ahead and give Edgemir Bain Tackle a call and he'll set you up with them guys. Oh, absolutely. All right, so we're getting ready to talk snakeheads with Steve, but you have a frog here. Um, just named. I see Taylor. I see Taylor yep. stuff. We'll carry so Taylor stuff. Here's a few frogs that we carry in the shop. Uh, our goal was locals supporting locals. That's what we started with from from the start. Local guy here. Me and my father. We we run the bait shop. Born and raised here. So my, my big thing is, you know, local supporting local. And, that, and that's what we did. A uh, little story real quick, how I found all these local guys who are in my shop. I, uh, I went to the Pasadena Fishing Expo. As soon as we signed the lease for the place, we weren't even open yet. I signed the lease on January 27th, 2020, 2022. So then we, me and my father, we went to um, the Pasadena Fishing Expo. We walked around, mm-hmm. just looking at tables. We, we weren't talking to anybody yet, we were just looking at tables. But this guy here... And, and, you know, I don't know any of whatever. But, yeah, this guy here, he has a, he has a pile of lures on his table. Okay, so he, he's a lure maker. So that was Saturday. So then Sunday we go back. Now he only has a pile that, that's high. So, okay, that's a popular lure. So we started talking to all the guys, like, hey, we're opening a bait shop here down in Edgemere. We'd like to have your stuff in the shop. And then that's how it started off. We, we went to the shows, found the local guys, the best sellers that we could find there, and then we put them in the shop. And, I mean, it really feels like every month we're adding a new local company to the shop. That's good. Which is, that's that's our goal. We we want to have stuff in the store that you can't get at Walmart. You can't get at Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's Dicks. You can't get it there. You can get it here. Right. And, you know, and I'm not trying to take away from any sales from the guys on the internet because, as we spoke earlier about right. shipping, yes, we, ship, we, we don't ship because these are local guys for people who can't get up this way. Mm-hmm. You can contact them on Facebook or their website, and they'll ship it to you. But right. if you want to get it in hand and you're in this area, stop in here and get it. That's, yeah. how, that's why we did it that way. That's so. So I was kind of telling you when you open your own business. I mean, I have a little tiny small business, and um, it's not twenty four seven. But when you have a business, what you're doing? Uh, oh, it's twenty four seven. It's twenty four seven. I got a funny story. So the other night, um, I guess it was about Wednesday night. I'm sitting at home. About 9 30, get ready to go to bed. At night? <laughs> yeah, nine, at 9 30 at night, get ready to go to bed, and the alarm goes off. I'm like, oh man, what's going on up here? You know? So I come up here, I'm looking around, doors locked, I walk in the shop, and a fishing rod fell out of the rack. It sent our alarm off, and I'm like, well, you know, plug another hour on the time clock. There you go. <laughs> the, uh, but that's, that's pretty, is there, there's a certain frog here you wanted to um, there talk is. about. Yeah, so um, it's called the Beowulf frog. Man, what, sorry, we, we we spent a lot. The next the next thing would be a, a better camera, but it's called a what's it called again? Uh, the Beowulf. Here, Jim, put that up to my camera a little bit, just a little closer to the camera. There you go. So there, there's 15 different styles and uh, colors on this frog. Um, and what I like about these frogs is, I'm 
I've seen a lot of frogs. You have a lot of frogs come to the shop. And what I specifically like about this frog, and uh, Cambo's going to be testing them out this year. I, right. I, he's got his hands on a bunch of them. It's a triple blade. Triple blade? Um, yeah, there's a triple blade. It has a two Colorados and a smaller blade in the middle. And that there is going to put off a lot of action you know, for snakeheads. The one you're pulling out there, that's a popping frog. Yeah. That's got the blade, and it's got one blade in between the, the – and this is the pop, you know, popping frog. Yep. And they, they definitely have – all these definitely come out with some weird colors. These are all – They do. They do. But these are uh, – hey, if, if they're going to – I know Cambo likes them, the pink. Yeah. He likes pink and orange, <laughs> yeah. right? And I uh, these are exclusive at our shop. You can only get these right now at our shop. Um, and you can. I only, like that popping frog. Yeah, I mean this. I really do like this popping frog. The, the poppers, I, I I like, especially if you really really need to make noise to bring them, bring them to there. The poppers can really. But then, you know, then you bring this when it when the noisy stuff isn't when the noisy stuff is isn't working, you know. Oh, well, hey, let's give them away. Yeah. Actually, I forgot I was going to give this away. Actually, I got to, um, I'll, when I'm switching over from you to Cambo, yeah, yeah. Um, I got to put this little thing on there. And what I'll do is that if you, if you want to win something from here, I'll actually add something in here. I'll buy, you know, like I said, I'm going to throw a little money in there too. And um, you can put in, don't put it in yet until I get it set up, but we'll put in hash, hashtag snakehead. And when I get it set up, I'll let you guys go ahead and start putting that in there and then we'll rain up there and somebody will win and then uh i'll send them out to you i want to talk about tackle yeah fishing yeah you company. can you can talk okay. about whatever one you so, want buddy tackle fishing company also is another frog that's exclusive at our shop um the owner's name is andrew better known business he lives out you know mount area area he's a really good guy we carry uh, a whole line of his frogs and his soft plastics um he he has a ton of frogs from poppers uh you know, just the regular fat body, the smaller body profile. Um, follow him on Facebook uh, and TikTok and Instagram. It's Tactical Fishing Company. Um, again, you can get them online from him or you can come to the shop and get, get them here. He does, you know, saw plastics, frogs, hollow bodies. Um, he, he's really getting into a bunch of different stuff. He's got some new stuff coming this year. So uh, definitely give him a follow. Check him out. Cool. Also want to talk about Tower Lord. Tower. Warren is a really good dude, man. Warren, well, on when I I got a video coming up that I'm going to show, um, it's a it's that I'm going to show, and it was we had a snakehead tournament down here about maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. and it was a whole hoopla of me getting here because I live on Eastern Shore, but I wanted to come on this side because I had a spot that I wanted to fish. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I was fishing up in Gunpowder. I like the Seneca area. Yeah, yeah. Because of all the grass and everything mm -hmm. that's up in there. Absolutely. And um, so I live on Eastern Shore, and I had the day off. Okay. And at the last minute, Friday night, the guy canceled on me. So I had to work every, I work every Saturday. Oh, man. So I actually had to work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually had to work that day. And it was, it's funny that I've rushed and I left the Eastern Shore at 830. I didn't get up here to around 11. And um, I fished in 20 minutes and tail. And he was leading the tournament all day. Was it? Yeah. He was leading the tournament all day. And then with like 20 minutes left, I finally, I, I got the win to fish that day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I felt bad. And he felt bad, but I, it was a, it's a tournament I won't forget because that was a really big one. But I always give a hard time because he knows I won't let him live it down, Stephen, because he was fishing the same tournament. <laughs> yeah, Warren's a really good guy. We carry a whole line of his frogs. Um, he has the popping frogs and he has the skirts. And, I mean, he has the works of it. Um, again, you can follow him on Facebook. Check him out. You can order from him, or you can pick him up the shop. Is there is there any like say you're gonna, and this is infamous. This is all Rashawn, right? Yeah, that's Rashawn. Um, Rashawn, Rashawn is another. Definitely play, and we got. He's got everything over there. You got, you got. This one looks uh, them dark colors, man. Them dark black colors, man, can really work, man. Absolutely, especially on a nice, on a nice cloudy day. Yeah, I carry um pretty much everybody um local guy, and we. I mean, we also have box You know, we right. have live target, spro, lunker hunt. Um, we like to pride ourselves on our snakehead selection. Because we carry everything from inline spinners, shatter baits, hollow bodies, soft plastics, you name it, we have it. So if you're new to getting into snakehead or you're an avid snakehead fisherman, we have something here for everybody. All right. So I think we got out the history. I know that the, it was how long? Because your dad was telling me that this was closed for what, about maybe about two, two or three, three years. years? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a bait shop since I believe the, the 1950s. Right. Um, and I actually, this was my first job. 
I worked for the previous owner, Ferrell, when I was 14, 12, 17. Oh, really? So, yeah, he taught me a lot about the business, and I always stopped in, you know, because I've been fishing pretty much my whole life. And I learned a lot from Ferrell. I learned a lot what to do and what not to do. You know what I mean? Right. So we, we took his method, and we ran with it. I figured it's been working for 50 years. Why well, fix something that's not broke? And we, good. And the good thing is that you're good with you're good kind of with the uh, the um the, the the social media stuff too. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the best social right. media connoisseur guy, but I can I can get my way around Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Instagram stuff. I'll tell you what I'll do. I said I, maybe I'll, I'll work something out. I'll, I'll I'll make you just give me a bunch of video. I'll make a video for you. you can pop up air or something. Cool. Um, but you come to Edgemere Bait and Tackle to right down here at Sparrows Point, Sparrows Point. This is North Point Boulevard. Um, North Point Boulevard, right? This North, Point Road. North Point Road. North Point Road. I haven't been here. I hadn't lived here in 15 years. <laughs> um, but uh, I appreciate again him letting me come down and infiltrating his uh, his shop. But we want to promote these guys because you know, like I said, he works long hours and he's got everything you need from saltwater pan and the pan fishing. You know, you got your pickerel. Everybody's at their pickerel fishing right oh, now. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we have a mess of everything in here. You got all, all the MEPs. I see all the MEPs are over there. He's got yeah, the live the bait. So I, I, the easiest way to catch any fish and is a bobber minnow. Go get yourself a bobber and over top. We do carry the snakehead destroyers from the bait boys on Eastern Shore. Oh, do you? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you got the – yeah, it's, they got them over here. Swimmer. So he's got yeah, yeah, plenty of minnows, plenty of minnows, plenty of live bait, and he carries all other kind of stuff. He's got seasoning for your crabs, and if you got, you know, that time, he's got crab traps. Um, and if you can see, I don't want to show you too much, but – all lined up, man. It's nothing <laughs> but small fish rods for next week's giveaway. So next week, come down here. He's going to have a, um, a really big giveaway. If you got a young kid that wants a fish rod, bring him up here. They're giving them away to him. Yeah, we right. got. That's going to be a good time. That's our favorite event of the year because what happens with that is we give out 500 rods and then we rolls right into our. That's going to be our third annual youth fishing tournament we have in June, okay. and that's an awesome event too. Is it? Yeah. Absolutely. Where's that usually held at? You can fish anywhere you want, but you just bring your fish here. What we do is we do three categories. You do uh, snakehead, white perch, catfish. Okay. We stay away from the rockfish because one, yeah. it's a it's a kid tournament. And I don't want somebody to walk in with a twelve inch rockfish. Right. You know what I mean? So we just do them three categories where there's not really much regulations on them, but you always have to follow the DNR regulations. They come here. We put a big board out with everybody's name on it. It's a two day tournament, Saturday and Sunday. And there's nothing better when you see the kids getting out with their parents and spending the whole weekend than, you know, coming up in the evening, 5, 6 o'clock, and they're looking at the board like, oh, i got to beat this 24-inch you know, catfish. And, oh, it, I mean, it's and just then they're out there all day Sunday trying to beat it. just an awesome event, and every kid gets a, gets a gift from us. You know, last year we did shirts. year before that, everybody got a tackle box. Um, Steve Fogel from Backyard Custom Rods, he always donates his, you know, rods for the first place winner. It's a custom rod to your liking. It, it's just it's just an awesome event. And it gets the kids out of the house and, you know, fish. Yeah. That's what the main thing's well, about. Well, that's kind of why I came here because, you know, I've been – all the posts and everything you've been doing, um, I thought this would be a great shop to start my first Tackle Shop podcast. I do have a couple more coming. We're setting some dates up. Um, the the one I have is going to be um, at um, Bay Country Crab and Supri Supply in Edgewater. Um, we have Captain Boom Boomies coming. She's a female captain for the big boats, and we're going to talk to her. I think she's very interesting. She's really funny. Um, she's just she's a character. But you know, we're going to talk to her about you know what it's like when you you know when you got a. Because I watch people. So what kind of interests me? This is kind of off the wall, but um, I watch single people. I mean, people by herself take this little stinking sailboat and leave California and go to Hawaii. Take them like three four <laughs> weeks to go there. You know, I think it's interesting to watch somebody do that. I mean, I watched, so I think it's, it's kind of interesting. I'd oh, like yeah, to hear her. Sure. She's kind of a nerd, she says, when it comes to that stuff. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch and we're going to bring, bring on Cambo. And I have a little video here and then you'll just have to give me a second to set up to give away. And by the end of it, you stick around, we'll give away a couple lures. We'll give something away. And uh, that'll be it. Cool, man. Thanks. Cool. Uh, Brian, thank you very thank much, you, man. man. I really appreciate it. No problem. All right, everybody stick around. Here's an awesome video from my from my, my buddy. What is that, fish? This is the Asian snakehead fish. What they do is they swim around the lake, eating all the fish they see. When all the fish are gone. They get out and they walk to another. You think that they're walking around out here? <laughs> Hurry! Hurry! Get out! What happened? 
remember, if you see one of those things, shoot to kill. Can we really get in and give those little pops like I was just showing you? Oh, oh, you got him, son! Reel him, reel him, yeah, yeah! Reel, pressure, pressure! Get the pressure on, real hard. Oh, wow, here, hold on the rod. I'll land him, you hold on the rod. <laughs> well, folks, we continued our quest for Orion's first topwater snakehead. <laughs> this time around, it looks like we finally did it. Along the way, I'm gonna provide some tips for you to get your own children on their first topwater snakehead because some realizations definitely hit me. And once I put those kind of tips and those ideas into action, we made it happen. Let's go fish. Oh, oh I'm right on it. I'm right on it. Oof. There he is. Got him. Nice fish. I gotta keep him on. Gotta keep him on. Oh, it's a big fish, folks. It's a big fish. Haven't even started fighting yet. Big fish. Oh, wow. Hang on, you. Oh, he's down the grass. Get up here. Oh, gross. This is not the cleanest water. He's got this water all over me. Oh, yes. Holy sh Yes. Oh, my God. Wait on her. You want to find out why? Go back, check out part one. But here in part two, the top water blow ups and the action are just insane. At the end of it, you're gonna see that I got what I'm pretty sure is the longest five fish total in the history of snakehead tournaments for single day tournaments. So I'll explain the gear, I'll explain the tactics and tips at the end of this video, so stick around till the end so I can pass on that information to you. But for now, let's get to the action. All right, folks, we have a fry ball. And I've seen the parent, and it's big. Come on, parent. Do your thing. Protect your fry. Like that. Like that. Oh, God. Another absolute gargantuan fish. Holy crap. Oh God. Oh God, oh God. Oh buddy. <laughs> yes! Oh, I love it. Don't worry. I'm gonna get you back to your fry, ASAP. Ugh. <laughs> that last one I caught makes this one look small. <laughs> it's a dragon class fish, but that last one I caught makes this one look small. What? I wasn't recording? No! Fudge muffin! Oh, folks, I just got a monster. It was a beautiful hit, great jump, but I wasn't recording, dang it. Ugh. I've been working this big fry ball and man, is it paid off in a big way. Oh my God. Ugh. Holy crap. God, what a beautiful fish too. I love the snakehead that are in the more clear water. They just get so gorgeous. All right, he's off the hook. The danger factor has officially risen. He is off the hook. I gotta get this fish on the bump board, measured and photographed before she manages to escape. Oh my God, look at this fish. Look at that. That's probably a 13 pound fish. That is probably a 13 pound fish. Good God, what a beast. Oh my God. Holy crap! Oh, Jesus! Oh, no, no, no! No, no, no! He's got me so buried in the crap! Oh, he's gonna get off. There's no way I'm gonna land this fish. Oh, he's off. He's off. 
Son of a... He's not. I don't think he is. There it is. Holy crap. Did y'all see that jump? Oh. Oh my god. Talk about getting me fired up. That was one of the most insane hits I have ever seen in my life. Oh, and she's absolutely gargantuan. <laughs> oh, she just came off the hook. She was buried in all that hydrilla, and she just came off the hook in the net. Oh, God, that's lucky. Oh, oh my God. That was insane. Whew. God, that was crazy. Literally, all I could take right now is one bite. Not even a one good, like really big bite or a good bite. One decent bite. One decent fish, and we could take this tournament. Oh. The grind continues. I gave it my best shot, man. I fished hard till the buzzer. Just couldn't get a single hit from Snakehead all day. Literally all day. Now let's check the leaderboard. And let's see who's got it. I think it's Warren Taylor last I checked. Oh, Sam Tudor. No, I can't believe Sam won it at the last minute. <laughs> oh, I'm never going to hear the end of this. I am never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> Congrats, Sam. Congrats, man. Over here, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Picked the wrong water. Picked the wrong water. Fished hard from start till finish, threw everything I had with me, and couldn't draw a snakehead bite to save my life. <laughs> Congrats, Sam. <laughs>
you know, especially my new job, average day, like probably 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is an average day. And yeah. They try to find time to edit and everything in there and spend time with your kids and check homework and check uniforms for the next day of school and check lunches and all that kind of crap. It's a lot. Dude. Yeah. And come here on a Saturday when it's 60 degrees. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, was, I was telling her, way here. I was like, you know, this is kind of why I'm always hesitant to commit to something in the future because I never know what the weather's going to be. Right. Because it's going to be you nice wake today. Up this morning, everything is a sheet of glass, warm overnight temps, the fog. I love fishing in the fog and the snow. It makes for great video and it's just an like incredible experience out there on the water. And you're sitting it. here in a tackle shop. I, I'm okay though. I mean, it's just like I'm still immersed in fishing to some degree in here, even though I'm not fishing actively right now. I'm surrounded by fishing stuff. It's almost as good. You had a guy, Rich, come in here and just gave yeah. you something pretty awesome. We're going to have somebody in a minute come up and bring that over to us. Yeah, that was beautiful. But, and another thing when it comes to YouTube, you know, we're, look, guys, we're going to be talking about snakeheads. Don't, don't, we're, we're definitely going to be talking about snakeheads. <laughs> we're we're going to get there. We're going to get there. The, um, but last year for me, you know, when we do YouTube, they always kind of say that. You know, when it comes to subscribers, you know, it's a, it's a long, it can, some people are lucky and it just takes off. Some guys like, you know, me, I, you know, it's, it's a grind. Yep. And at the end of last summer, you know, I, I really started to see, you know, the snowball. I started, yeah. instead of like one or two subscribers a day, I'm seeing 10, 15, 40, those views are going up. Yep. And then I had a complete crap show with my knee and I barely could get out and any day off I was home just recovering. So, I mean, how did that, because you just got over about two years ago, you yeah. tore your Achilles tendon. Yeah, it was a complete tear of my Achilles tendon. For y'all that don't know the backstory, I was at my daughter's birthday party at, I believe it was Sky Zone. <laughs> my wife is watching this. She's going to be in the comment section in a second here. But anyway, they had a warped wall. If you ever seen American Ninja Warrior, and I've never seen a warped wall before, I'm like, I got to do this. This is the first time I've ever been around when I got to do it. That's when you're young. See, when you get old, you'll exactly. get smart. <laughs> exactly. As I mean, at the time, I was, what, probably 37? About, yeah, about 37 at the time, 36, 37. And like, I, I do everything, you know, like CrossFit, you know, various differently, you know, like handstand push ups, do all that kind of crap, you know? It's like I could take a warped wall, didn't stretch, didn't warm up. I went to run up that wall, and the next thing I know, I just kind of collapsed into the side of the wall. And I was so confused. I was like, <laughs> this is not what I told my body to do. Why am I falling? And then I realized I couldn't walk on my one foot. And I it stood, didn't hurt? No, I, I stood up. Oh, it didn't hurt yet. I just, I stood up straight, and I could look at my foot laying flat on the ground, just like this. But it felt like my heel was off the ground like this. And that's because the Achilles tendon was completely snapped. Now, that being said, <laughs> after I got my big moon boot, and you can still go back and watch some of my videos from this time, I had some very, very helpful friends. I think Butch was helping me out. Might have been Rashawn at the time, too. Jared. A lot of guys would help me load and unload my kayak. And you can see me in videos like to this day in the water with my big old moon boot on when I shouldn't have been. Because right. I, I was probably only like a, several weeks away from the surgery at that point. I wasn't supposed to get it wet or anything else. So, I mean, had I actually gotten the situation, I, I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. But you, you know what they make. With support, you can do it. I'm just letting you know, if it ever happens again, right now they actually do have, because I, I wasn't really been able to take a shower because I had, yeah. I couldn't get this wet. They actually have a boot cover, dude. It's plastic. Yeah. You actually, you can put it and it's real tight and yep. it cut and won't let water get in it's there. It's like a kind of a dry suit seal. No, it's plastic somebody yeah. make a million dollars off a piece of cheap plastic but it goes over Dude. your thing and keep you getting wet well i'm gonna try not to tear it again but if i do <laughs> i'm coming for the plastic yeah we had a guy down at the chick this this guy was a pretty mm -hmm. big he was a pretty big dude and he went in and he was on his little 16 foot john boot mm -hmm. this guy had like a ten thousand dollar um artificial leg on oh, like i mean crap. he went in the water he flipped the boat. All his, everybody, his gear was all in the water and everything. I'm talking like a ten thousand uh, dollar thing. You know what I mean? And he he flipped in the water, and I'm going like something that just that's that, pretty that's damn just, expensive. It, it's terrible when that kind of crap happens, man. I mean, my, that area is apparently prone to issues because my buddy Rodney was up there. You may have seen his video. It's tight lines three hundred two. He was wearing, I think, Crocs to launch his kayak. Normally not a problem. He goes to step into the water. And then you just hear him scream like, oh, and, the, and they're like, what the hell is he yelling about? A broken fishing rod was left in the water and it went through the holes in his Crocs up through the top of his foot. Pick up your trash, people. I, I'm, I, that's, it's like, you got to be careful, like wading into water that people are fish or even around, you know, you never, it could be broken glass, could be anything in there, man. But be careful out there. You know, when a whole rod going through the bottom of your foot. Well, that being said, with the um, hey, stick around. We're going to give away. I'm going to give away a couple lures 
here, a couple a uh, couple frogs. Um, I took Stephen away from a sixty degree day. Um, so <laughs> for anybody right now, if you're going to fish in the wintertime and you're looking for your snakeheads, yeah. Um, what? Just give them what you would would say because we're going to have some combo, some pretty good cold nights coming up. Yep. Highs in the forties, highs in the fifties. Yeah. So it's going to be really cold. So. Tell them your suggestion if you're going to be looking for snakehead. Okay, so here's the deal for cold weather snakehead fishing, okay? First thing you want to look for is a two to three day warming trend. So, you know, the highs are going to get up into like the 50s. That's a warming trend during the cold part of the year, right? You want to aim for that second or third day. You want to fish from about noon or 1 p.m. until about dark. That, that's going to be your window right there. You want maximum warming. Aside from that, find a south-facing cove. So pull up Google Earth, whatever tool you use for that. Look at those coves that the setting sun or the high sun to the setting sun is going to have maximum exposure on that particular cove. And what that'll do, it, gets, it provides the most warmth because snakehead, like we talked about it, we were talking about here in the shop a little bit earlier. Snakehead do seem, and the, the science is still young, but snakehead do seem to gravitate towards deeper water when it gets cold. Um, but at the very least, they're definitely going to go to the bottom, wherever that is. They're going to hang out and just kind of lay in the mud or the bottom. So people always ask me where to go. In the colder months my answer is usually the eastern shore mm -hmm. and that's because the eastern shore you have most of those rivers over there especially in like the uh, dorchester county area you're good you're good you're going to have almost uniformly shallow water so even if snakehead do want to go to deep water they don't have much of an option they yeah. really they really don't and when there's warming trends that's when they actually push up into those channel kind of drop offs around that like three foot range up into the flats which are about a foot and a half to two and a half feet that's where you're going to find them and what to throw is going to be your inline MEPS. I was talking to somebody in the shop just about it today. He's like, yeah, the number three MEPS, like you said, it's a killer. It's been killing it for me. Yep. Like, That's what you want to use this time of year. That or minnows. And Edgemere Bait and Tackle, they got yep. some great minnows over you here. Got plenty it's, of minnows. This is where I always come for them. I only live like eight minutes away from here. It's been so convenient. I love that they opened up over here because now I got a local tackle shop yep. with a bunch of local lure makers. And I can come here in the winter and get minnows. Yep. It's too easy, it's, man. It's, it's too easy. It's, it's like I said, he said it had um, the, the shop hasn't been open for a while, and his, you know, his father was like, "Hey, I'm still, you know, I, I'm still full time like me. It's like still full time." And yeah, the son, hey, Brian stepped up, man. He's been here, and he's yeah, they're, and they're just getting they're just getting bigger and bigger. Um, at least more stuff coming in, and he is like, we're trying to support the local tackle shops. We're there. He's supporting the local guys with their baits and stuff like that. And um, we got Rashawn. You got your if, if, yeah, if Miss Fishing. I like that. You got his frog. What do you like about that? On here, well, first of all, and then this is getting to be kind of a norm, but not not across the board, especially with the big lure makers. The local lure makers, I think, are being more responsive to our kind of design requests and these modification and tweaks on these lure designs. But Rashawn, Rashawn's fish snakehead much longer than I have, like straight up. Rashawn's been in the game for a long, long time. He used to have snakeheads back in the day before it was illegal to have them. But what you're looking for in a frog, I always, I always go through this. Out of the pack, I want to see the angle of the hook. Because you can tweak a hook's angle. You can do that, but you're necessarily going to weaken it because you're bending metal that's set in place. Like you're going to create at least some small stress fractures in there. But so straight out of the pack, and this is pretty much across the board right now. I'm kind of looking around here at these other options we have. You're looking for that slightly, just slightly upward angle. What you definitely don't want to see, though, is a hook point that faces down out of the pack. Right. Is it more weedless? Yes. But are you going to miss and lose a lot of fish as a result? Yes. So the hook angle, the blades on the back, a little bit of flash on the back of a frog. It's like back in the day, I always used to go for my skirted frogs and mm -hmm. I still use them. Like, you know, you got tailored lures here. I, I throw a lot of a core, but the blades, there's been some days and I learned this real quickly fishing with Rashawn. I'd be throwing the skirted frogs and he'd be throwing blades. I didn't have any bladed frogs. I was catching nothing fishing the exact same areas, exact same cadence, exact same pattern. Catching nothing. He rubs it in too, doesn't he? Oh, he loves it. <laughs> Rashawn will talk crap like no other well, out there on the fishing grounds. He talks crap like no other, man. <laughs> the, uh, but this year, I, I mean, I've noticed that last year, I mean, you really tore up the tournament tournaments it, last year. It's a, uh, I got a lot of silver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, had, I had a great time though. It, but yeah, it was a fun time. It was a fun time. Cause I mean, I know I, I was just showing a couple of videos. I mean, you were catching some really big yeah. snakeheads. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was fantastic. It was a heck of a year. Are you still are you still hearing the guys crying about how the snakeheads are eating everything? I mean, yeah, that's never going to stop. Really? That's that's the, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's like I think 
a lot of people are kind of coming to the realization that snakehead at the very least are not our biggest problem. Right. You know, and we definitely do have bigger problems. Number one being us, but number two after that for me would be blue cats. And I know gonna have, I have a few blue cat buddies who are going to be crap about that. And I don't blame yeah. them. No, so it's, it's like, like I fished some Virginia rivers that have had blue cats for a long time. And you can still like the Rappahannock, for example, has excellent blue cat fishing. And that's what you're into and big ones too. But you can still go there in the spring and you, you still get good perch runs. You still get good crappy runs. You, know, you can still there, go through there and go bass fish. So it's like, I never want to be that guy to say like the sky is falling. That being said, <laughs> snakehead grow to what? Oh, on average, a big snakehead is about 30 inches. That's your citation size fish, right? Snakehead exists almost exclusively in shallow waters and grasses. So you can, looking at their habitat and their behavior, what they eat, you can kind of estimate what their impact is going to be to a degree, right? right. And, and deeper water systems are not going to have as much of an impact because it's not, that's not their forte. That's not their niche. But in uniformly shallow systems, say black water, you expect more of an impact, right? And I think the science has kind of borne that out. The, 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 both, the, the bow fishing are definitely having, they are. They're, they, having, it, it, they're, they're controlling. Yes. I I know if they're over controlling, um, they're, they're controlling everything. Yeah. Blue cats, carp, I mean, yeah. carp and stuff like that. But the, um, even with all the snakeheads, I think with, when it comes to black water, because um, what, what I've said is that there was times that you would right now mm -hmm. it's still not, it's not as popular as it used to be. No, it's not because they can come up here and catch them. But yeah, you know, when it really got popular, man, I think that really helped kind of stabilize the bass fishing and the snakeheads down there because people were fair. actually because people were actually taking some out yeah. more than putting them back in. Yep. And I go down there, I can go down there and catch 14, 15 pounds of largemouth yeah. without even touching a snake. It's especially in those rivers that you and I fish over there. Yeah. As I mean, that's some of the that's probably my favorite bass river around here in Maryland, honestly, especially for largemouth. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like you're saying, it's like I know a lot of in a lot of ways I am one of those guys who's kind of the face for like pro snakehead or like snakehead are actually kind of a good thing in certain respects. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you watch my videos, you'll see me keep snakehead. So I've it, seen you more lately than, yeah, than it, before. Before you yeah. never showed that, but yeah. now you're actually harvesting two or three. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's and it's good with the fact because yeah. the, all the family likes it, right? It, it, I mean, it's the best tasting freshwater fish you're going to get, period. And honestly, I think it's better than a lot of saltwater fish. But there's there's some niche fish in there that snakehead aren't going to touch, like a seared ahi tuna is in a class of its own. Right. Like you, the, you can kind of identify those ones that kind of stand out and apart from the crowd. But that being said, you know, I mean, one day what's probably going to happen is they're going to take the word snakehead and they're going to rebrand it with something that's a lot more marketable, a lot more, right. a lot more palatable. And then it's going to be one of the most popular fish on any menu in the country. Because I, it, it's just a matter of time. It's like it hasn't hit critical mass yet. It's in some restaurants. Right. But when the general public Acquire, gets away from what it looks like. Tries that, yeah. Gets away from what they look like, and just see like a clean, white, firm fillet. I mean, that stuff is so firm. You refrigerate it overnight, like leftovers. Eat it the next day. It's almost like biting in the chicken. Like, yeah, like that's that's how firm that meat is. I don't usually it, it don't usually last that long. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, but I, I mean, at least you're lucky, and you have. I can bring it home. I now I did try sea bass for the first time this year. I went sea out. Sea bass is good. I've never been on the ocean before. And yeah. I finally went out and went on a head boat. Well, how about your inner ear? Are you good out there? It was. I was always lost. Well, Even though it was a calm day, it was only, <laughs> it was only like five to ten mile an hour. Um, yeah. But he was drifting some, and then he would anchor. Mm -hmm. And as long as the boat was going front to back, it was yeah, okay. Yeah. But when it started kind of doing this thing, I did the video on it, and I, 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 uh, I only sipped yes. the water all day. I wanted to yep. eat something. I'm like, I did maybe eat a chip, but I was not eating anything. Thought it was good. It was close, but I, I, I was good. But I caught, I caught my. I came a little less than I caught about eleven sea bass that day, mm -hmm. and uh, man, they're pretty good. They're damn good. I'm getting ready to. Uh, I do. Hey, if you want to, this is Cambo Trout Fishing. He has a YouTube channel. Please go check him out yep. and subscribe to him. I mean, he's, he's if you want to learn about snakehead. But this, now, now the thing with him, now I fly around. I, I got my notes here, but I end up just talking. That's and he cool, knows man. he had to get me off the phone the other day because I won't shut up. The uh, but he does more now. I mean, yeah. a lot of his videos, he, he goes out yellow perch fishing, to, and that's that runs coming as you were just talking about. Yeah, it's white perch, and you can catch catfish, big catfish, all year long. All year long, dude. And, and I mean, we got out with you know uh, my buddy Tommy, Tommy Tech, and then Infamous Fishing. We got out for Striper. We were snap jigging them probably about two weeks ago now, and had a blast out there on the bay. Because I mean, that uh, the Striper bite right now is hot. I mean, I'm sure yeah. any, almost anyone in the fishing community can tell you that right now. It, it's they are just. It's a great size class fish too, healthy fish. But yeah, I mean, I'm into pretty much anything, you know, it's just <laughs> within the limits of time, the limits of time and my family budget, I'm up to catch just about anything. I, I was actually going to go trout fishing tomorrow, 
with uh, Lucky and Blessed Fishing. They were having kind of a get together at Allen's Pond Park. If you haven't seen that yet, it got postponed till December 31st because tomorrow's weather is looking pretty rough. Pretty nice. As, as, especially once you get towards late morning and into the rest of the day. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't care if it's trout, yellow perch, white perch, catfish, pickerel, pike, smallmouth, largemouth, snakehead. I don't, I don't care. I'll catch it, man. The, uh, it's good, man. This is good. I'm fair, again, <laughs> I, I was talking to Steve and I did sleep. What did you, you came all the way from Southern Maryland. How you doing? I appreciate it, man. Yeah, he drove. <laughs> what location were you thinking? I thought you were going to be here, then you were saying something. No, I was here. I was like, damn, I think he's at home at his house. I don't know where that is. So I said, sure. No, they they had this. They were setting it up. They were setting this up for next week. It's a nice and, uh, He drove all the way from Southern Maryland to come here. Oh, Lord. That's awesome. I mean, Smallwood and Mad Woman have been down there a little bit, yeah. Yep. You would have been, you probably could have waited to January 6th. I was going to be in Edgewater. It would have been a lot closer. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I'm with, I'm, we're talking with Sleeper Barbecue. You got to check his channel. He does a lot of barbecue cooking and stuff like that. He does live streams pretty much every, I don't get to watch it. I always watch the replay, but every Sunday night he goes live and uh, gets like, Russ and everything from uh, Smoky Riz Barbecue, and they just they're really just like hanging out and and talking to have a good time. Um, so if now, I'm sorry, I got a little little distracted where we're going here, but um, I want to show you something. Um, can you bring that up here? So Stephen, a guy named Rich, just came up here and just gave him this this plaque, and man, what an awesome looking plaque! Look at that thing. Hold up a little bit more. Look at that. Freaking beautiful work. Ain't beautiful that awesome? Work. And he made this for you because you guys do a lot of things with the uh, yeah with the fallen outdoors. Yeah, so, here I you mean, go. So here you go, young man. Thank you. We got the my, my team, the Legion of Anglers, and I mean, I mean, honestly, credit especially to Rashawn and Tommy. It's like I know a lot of times I'm the face for it, right? But when I tell you that a lot, the, a lot of the behind scenes work is handled by like Rashawn, Tommy, and the team, I just want to get that out there. As I, it has my name on it, and I very much appreciate that. But I got to give it to my teammates for everything that we actually get done. Um, but yeah, it's, we try to do a lot of events to give back. As you know, Rashawn's a veteran. We have several other veterans from the Legion of Anglers and we value not just being able to give back to veterans, but giving back to the community in general, because one reason I like to really support local business, you know, we're helping out people in the community mm -hmm. and you know, it, it sounds kind of cliche, but that's how it is in terms of how money flows, right? You're trying to keep that money in the community to kind of raise the standard of living within your community. Like we and don't get me wrong, I still go to Bass Pro occasionally. I still go mm. to big box brands and stuff like that. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But at the same time, if you want to have a bigger impact for around the area you live and the people you live around, you know, local business is what some you support. Well, that's why I'm, I, I'm. You're talking about somebody that's upset that John shut down Denton Rod and Tackle. Yeah, uh, I was upset because yep. I mean he had. I mean he was really being. You know, I I already miss it. We yep. got some other ones, but it was, it was something about John and what he was doing there that. Yep. Um, he does love going to the store. Yeah, but get, uh, getting back to I going off on that tangent over I'm there. Like, yeah, getting, yeah. getting back to the team with the Legion, it's like with the Fallen Outdoors, uh, Heroes on the Water, and I think soon we'll probably start kicking off our cleanup events as well. It's uh, and I'll touch on the tournament series later in the video right here. But our cleanup uh, meetup events, what we generally try to do is we go around to areas that we hear need help being cleaned up because unfortunately not everybody takes care of a fishing spot like you wish they would. Like Blackwater, I used to get a mess down there. Uh, yeah, I mean the trash can fills up and then it's just overflowing everywhere, and that's if it the trash even makes it to the trash can. So right. I mean, whenever you go fishing, try to take a trash bag with you, just pick stuff up as you kind of see it, just to kind of help out a little bit. But, but yeah, we we'll do our cleanup meetup events where we actually go out there we. Re kind of rehabilitate and clean up an area and then we all meet up and fish afterward. So it's, it, it's a good time to get together, eat some coffee, donuts, try to stay warm, clean up the area and then go fishing. Yeah. I got a, I got a, somebody had just mentioned it. Yeah. I have, um, this is big yacker fishing YouTube channel. I've been watching him since he's had about 50 subscribers. He's a little over 500 subscribers. He's doing good work. Yeah. He's doing good work. And he's, he's on a kayak and he does saltwater fishing. He just did some striper fishing um, he's pickerel fishing for the CCA right now. Yep. So he's, and he, he's got a really good channel. Um, he's trying to get to that thousand subscriber mark. So if you can go over and check him out, um, that's, that's a big yakker, big yakker fishing, um, really cool guy. Me and him, hopefully get out and do some fishing. I know we talked about it and maybe get out and do some of this cold, cold weather, uh, pickerel fishing. Yep. Big one yep. starting to bite. Big now, the only, the only thing bite. bad about that is I work every Saturday. 
So yeah. I work every Saturday and, you know, for me, I, I have a tiny small business. So I actually got to hire somebody to work for me. Okay. The, um, so a lot of times I can't, that's why I don't get the chance. Cause when, on your dates, a chance to get out there on a Saturday, because by the yep. time I would get there, you guys are already out fishing or something. Yeah. So I know you guys do that really early. You have any dates set up for that yet? Um, for the cleanups? Yeah. No, not yet. But I think at this point I'm aiming for like very early January is going to be the first time we actually get out there. Because I, I wanted to make it happen in December, but when I tell you life has been busy, like I said, my, my wife just successfully defended her PhD. You know, we had the grad party last night, and I was up till about 3 a.m., but I'm here. And we're, we're doing okay, but yeah. trying to fit everything in time-wise is just a struggle right now. Yeah, but I mean, it's that's got to be that's got to be really rewarding for her. Yeah, I, I, and I mean, I just, I won't take y'all through the whole path that she's been on. Suffice it to say that her PhD should have taken about three years, ended up taking five, almost six because of issues beyond her control. But never, nevertheless, the roadblocks that she's had to overcome, incredible, absolutely incredible, while being an excellent mom and on top of it. But well, that's what I mean. I mean, you're, yeah. she's, she's becoming a doctor. I told you, yeah. when you get that lake house, you know, sitting out there, you get that big house, you get that big giant lake behind you, you just, don't forget me. I, I got you, brother. I got you. <laughs> the, uh, so is there any other things coming up with you guys that um, you really want to talk about? I know you got some tournaments yeah. you're going to be coming up with and stuff. Yeah, and that's probably the thing that we're most excited about is that we got back in into the tournament game in a big way last year. And what we're getting, going for this year is called the Legion Elite Tournament Series. And that's going to be a tournament series that goes around the bay and it's going to culminate down at Matawoman Creek. But I do want to highlight a few things about it. First of all, John. our main and biggest sponsor, Delaware Paddle Sports. At the championship round of this tournament series, four tournaments total, three that are going to be on the trail. Fourth is going to be the championship down at Matawoman. The winner down there gets a free, excellent fishing kayak from courtesy of Delaware Paddle Sports. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, aside from that, I mean, I, I, got, I have a list here so I don't miss any of the other sponsors we have signed up so far. But, you know, Edgemere Bait and Tackle, Nakwa, Drave, Drink More Water, Action Hat. There's a few more. They're going to get, we're going to get announcements out about all of them. But it's something really excited about because, and you see this a lot more. I've, I've watched the, the Facebook groups where we've been discussing what do we do about the snakehead tournament environment because there's been some struggles and growing pains as we're going through it. And the point I think most people have arrived at now, single launch, single location, because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Everyone knows where each other are. We can, everyone can kind of watch each other, and everyone is on a kind of an even playing field, or as even as we can make it. Because we're all fishing the same water at that point. Right. No one's got like a secret private pond or some crap like that yeah, anyway. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's <laughs> aside from that, what you do after the fact, and which is probably the more important point, is that you're able to hang out, you swap the fish stories after the tournament. We usually have snacks, drinks, refreshments, the tournament ceremony and the awards and all that. And it's, I just think it, we're looking forward to kind of bringing the community back together. You know, we've, uh, we've had a lot of offline conversations with a lot of different people out there and we're looking at working together going forward. And I'm pretty excited about it. The, um, so the, the best thing I can say is make sure everybody's at the same ramp. Yeah. Oh no. And, and that's, that's the thing is to get a ramp. You got to check in, we check bump boards, make sure everything yeah. is good to go there. We got various different like tips and everything else and guidelines we provide when we're at the ramp, you got to check in, you got to check in off the water. And it's like, you know, to some degree, I know a lot of guys out there don't want all that structure and I get it. A lot of guys just want to go out uh, and fish. Yeah. But, but, like it, it, you run into like a few personalities and I don't, I don't want to get in the weeds. We believe we've, we're on good terms with some people that we've, we've had some small issues with in the past. We're on good terms now. So I'm not throwing shade at anybody. I'm just saying that it's best to have at that single location so that we can all fish together and hang out. And at that point, it's a friendly competition. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it's, it's like, I love to compete, but I'm not competing so I can like drag somebody through the dirt. I'm competing because I, I love testing myself against other great anglers out there. And I hope that, you know, other anglers and competitors feel the same. Well, when it comes to the kayak, I got the River Runners yep. Bass Club on there. That's a great tournament. It's a great club. They do tournaments throughout the year, too. Well, that's kind of what my buddy Keith, we, we did it with the boats. Yep. And um, we started out, see, we started out, when, now we all lost off the same spot. But we were doing, we were doing the CPR, mm -hmm. you know, and we had this, you know, kind of what you had. We just had a bad experience. We, a guy we just met that just joined the club. Yep. And uh, he did it twice. And uh, we're like, and we went the way and back in fish. Mm -hmm. I like the CPR. I like the CPR because you can release the fish where you catch it. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that, that, that's a big deal. Go ahead. That's, that's, that's a big deal. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. You know, cause when it's cool out like this or it's cold out there, it's not so much of a stress, but when yeah. you got 
five largemouth and it's 100 degrees out yep. and they're sitting and you catch them early in the morning and you got to be back to weigh in at three o'clock you got them fish i mean there's all kind of things you can take care of them but they you know it stresses the damn fish and you're Absolutely. moving if, ever, if you got 15 boats out there and you bring in 30 fish to that one area that you're dumping them off it's it, it never shown to be a bad thing but i just like it that you can put your fish back where you caught it and that's it's a big deal i mean unless i'm mistaken that they have they've done studies they've done studies in these big tournaments to see if those bass actually return to the areas in which they were caught and it doesn't seem to be the case a lot of times no. they will stick around in that area in which they're released and then you're changing a lot about that environment you know it, it's there's a lot to get into that conversation but yeah i i agree i like cpr I think is the way to go for a lot of reasons. And don't get me wrong. I grew up watching big bass tournaments. Yeah. Like that's what I did. Like Jimmy Houston, Bill dance, you know, that's what got me into, that's what got me into bass. Fishing. Yeah. I mean, I used to love watching those weigh-ins and watching them pull out those big bass. And like, to some degree, I still understand the spectacle. I, mm -hmm. I get it. I, I totally get it. But at the same time, you know, it's just a question of weighing our impact versus, you know, <laughs> what our priorities are it just it's just kind of what it is well on one of them shows they did they actually tracked i think they actually tracked yeah. the fish they, they, they and um, they showed studies. like yep. where, where you drop them off at the way yep. in where they traveled to where some of them kind of stayed around there but some of them actually almost went back yep. but i still like to see i still like to see power unfortunately i know like five or six years ago there was this really really big kayak guy that won a lot of tournaments mm -hmm. and he was called cheating he was uh, called he was called bending a board Come on. So when man. you get that board, he had it up on the side and he was actually bending it to make the fish look better. So that's a great, I'm so glad you brought that up. For, like a, for our tournament series, that's one thing that we're going to be changing is the required bump board. So always check the descriptions. You can find all of all of our tournament series. Like it, we're going to go around the bay, we're going to go from the east side, west side, upper bay, and then down at Mattawoman. But the thing I'm driving out with those bump boards right there, there are certain brands of bump boards like the Fray Bill, which I've used for a long time. I've used the gray 36 inch extendable fray bill for a long time. If you're just using that board to get, you get like a rough estimate of what the fish you caught, no problem. But in a tournament, we're not going to allow that anymore because those few unscrupulous people out there, or even people who are just doing things accidentally sometimes, you may think you have the board extended all the way and you don't. Or, you know, like the weight of that fish will put some flex in that board. Right. But there are boards like made by Catch in particular, and a few others out there that are much more firm, and they won't flex. So it's a make sure you read the kind of detailed description to find out what kind of boards we are allowing, because the issues like you're describing right there is exactly what we're trying to avoid. So when is when is the first tournament? Did I catch? Did I not catch so, that? The yeah. first tournament here. I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I mean. That's what yep. we're here. We're here to talk snakeheads. Hey, does anybody got any questions about snakeheads? Oh, yeah. You got, you got something about snakeheads there? Let us know. <laughs> I can't believe you. I'm still just I'm I'm blown away that you came down here with, with these videos over the year. I've answered so many questions. <laughs> yeah, the, the first tournament is going to be April 28th, 2024. That's going to be our Eastern Shore tournament. The next tournament after that will be May 19th. That'll be on the west side. Then on June 23rd, we're going to have our Upper Bay tournament. And I actually I can explain exactly why we do this rotation too, because that's going to be helpful for y'all to just catch fish. Period. And then finally, on July 28th, we have our championship round down at Mattawoman. Why so early in the year? So um, April, the end of April is usually when you start hitting a reliable bite for snakehead, honestly. Um, and it depends on the year. Sometimes we have really warm March and April. Sometimes we have a really cold, like, May, which we had, like, this year. It was really well, wild. it was warm early. Yeah, like, in it, April, it was, it was, like, really, really warm. It was again, really warm. And then it, just, it fell out, and when winter came back, it was ridiculous. But generally speaking, the end of April is usually when you're hitting temps that you're going to have a reliable snakehead bite. Not just reliable, one of the best bites of the year. That's the first pre-spawn bite. That's when they feed as heavy as I've ever seen them feed. So, so April 28th, but we chose the eastern shore for a reason. Those eastern shore waters over there are usually shallower. They have a dark bottom. And because of that, it's less volume, it's less mass for the sun to have to warm up. So you're going to have higher levels of activity, generally speaking in those shallow eastern shore waters early in the year than you will a lot of other places. That's why we're starting on the eastern shore over there. Then we brought it over to the western shore because the western shore is going to warm up a little bit earlier than the upper bay. Because right. The upper bay gets all that snow melt coming down the Susquehanna, and it's a lot colder water up there. It takes longer to warm up. So that's why we go from the east side to the west side to the upper and then close it out down on Mattawoman because Mattawoman is just, it's just a heck of a fishery, man. I mean, back in the day, that used to be snakehead mecca. Like yeah. back like 2012, from talking to my buddies who used to fish it back then, I was still bouncing around in the army at the time. But back like 2012, 2013, Mattawoman was insane. Now, there's still good numbers of snakehead there, period. 
like full stop. And we still catch a lot of big fish. But I mean, over time, when, when at nighttime, that river looks like a series of baseball diamonds from all the boat fishers. Right. Now, I don't know if it's still like that, but in recent times is what it was like. So they thinned them out, but you still got a lot of big fish and a lot of good fish. In there. Well, they're moving. I mean, I watched you on the one video. Um, I think you, I think you were fishing a tournament where you mm -hmm. pretty much set off of a point. Oh, I mean, you were like yeah. really, really far. I'm glad you said that. Really, really said far that. off the point. So, yes, yeah, I do watch your video. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so that was um, Virginia Kayak Anglers Elite. So that's actually um, founded and operated by several of our Legion teammates. And it's a great crew of guys down there. And they put together a very high quality, well-run tournament. So especially if you're down in Southern Maryland, Virginia, you want to look into a snakehead tournament, VKAE, excellent organization to work with. And that particular tournament you're talking about was on the Rappahannock. I had actually started shallow. There's pad fields on the Rappahannock. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I could see in the pad fields, I'm like, I started there. I wasn't seeing movement. The tide was pretty low. I think it was getting towards the end of an outgoing. And I wasn't seeing anything, nothing in these shallows. And I'm like, this is different, man, because snakehead you usually find in the shallows, especially in warm parts of the year. And I was like, you know, I can see the water's pushing out. I can see there's not enough water in here to hold them effectively in these pad fields. Let me try this point, because a lot of times what fish will do, even snakehead, They'll stage on a drop off, which is near this point, mm -hmm. and they'll wait for those bait fish on an outgoing tide to come out, and then they'll just start picking them off. Those snakehead were schooled up there, boy. It was a. I, I was using the uh, American Snakehead Custom Baby Cobra Spinner Bait, and I was tearing them up, tearing them up. I, I sat in that one point, anchored up, and I had I had to have landed, I think, probably six or seven there, and I missed or lost probably three or four more sitting in the same spot casting this point. I mean, it's snakehead are not, generally speaking, a schooling fish. That's what I was going to say. They don't, they don't school much. But there are exceptions to the rule, one of them being the pre-spawn in the spring. Like, either you find the right cove or you find the base of a dam where they can't travel any farther upstream, you're going to find a lot of them together, and I mean a lot of them. But aside from that, situations like I was just describing where you have that drop-off right there, current. they will school up, they'll find that tidal current, they'll find the ambush point, and they will school up there. Like, it, it definitely – the other thing about it, though – now, I'll hit this really quickly because it, it gets deep in the weeds. Down on the Rappahannock, they have a ton of boat fishing pressure, probably even more than up here in Maryland. And as a result, what seems to be happening is that those snakehead who naturally relate to shallow structure are getting picked off. I caught almost all my snakehead down there in about four feet of water or more, which is not normal for me at all. It was definitely an exception to the rule, kind of a learning experience. But what seems to be happening is that those fish who are whatever it is, gen like genetically inclined to relate more towards deeper water, mm -hmm. like natural selection because of the pressure we're putting on with bow fishing. Those fish who naturally want to stay shallow are being eliminated from the gene pool. Those fish who gravitate more towards deeper water are able to breed because they're not, they're at a depth where the bow fishermen can't reach them. Right. And, and that's just kind of a working theory of mine, but it's something I've been kicking around for a while. Maybe I'll get a little bit smarter about it, I guess. The, um, that too. As we're talking, I'm going to try to set up this giveaway and i think you can still see us i don't think we're going to go away but i want to set this up um hold on one second if they're not going to see us let me know i'll pick my nose or something <laughs> oh my god i not gonna and now i gotta tell you how are you saying you hunting and pecking over there yep <laughs> don't laugh at me <laughs> i'm from dundalk don't laugh at me um, actually, I need to. Oh, we got a question in there. The, um, I think he said that our snakeheads, warm water feeders. You're sorry, last. I asked you, just answered. You just, I think you answered the question. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean generally speaking, snakehead are going to be warm water feeders. Um, the kind of cutoff temperature that I have experienced for a solid or workable lure bite is usually around a 50 degree water temp. Anything below that, and the most productive method for catching them usually becomes live minnows, usually. But that is, that's the kind of bottom end of the spectrum. But generally speaking, snakehead are going to bite best once that water is up into the probably mid-60s, low to mid-60s is when that bite really starts turning fire for you. Definitely. All right. If everybody wants to put in hashtag snakehead. <laughs> Hashtag, hashtag snakehead. And I will have to. I got I to gotta join the stream and type in hashtag snakehead real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You might be the only one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do share it. my screen. Don't tell me. <laughs> Hashtag sneaking. I gotta stop putting stuff on this table. I can hear myself Me banging too. around the mic. Me too. Put in hashtag snake hit, hashtag a snake head, and um, we're gonna give away a couple lures. Um, I think we're, uh, he's gonna give me a couple lures and I'll buy one. So you're gonna get some top water frogs. Mm -hmm. um, we'll give you a couple different colors. Maybe we'll give you two to four of them and then we'll send them out to you. Yes, some good frogs are here too. Yeah. yeah I mean, these are all excellent frogs, honestly. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember you, you showing me this one, man. It's got triple blades on it. This one's got a single blade with a thing. Though. With Yeah, I mean, that's the best of both worlds, man. It, it's like if you can have both and it's going to float well, which I believe this one does. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't do it. We only got one person. He, he about to win a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right. Hold on, hold on. There it is. Start giving away. I know we saw the one. Yeah. It didn't come up. Why didn't it come up? It's weird. Oh, we know who he is, though. <laughs> Luckily, right now, we know who he is. It says nobody's in there. I didn't make the stream right. I say, it's all your tech. I haven't touched this. Yeah, one. that's all, you know. Let me see something. Mm. Can everybody see that? I don't know why. Did not add that to the stream. I don't know. It's so weird. Yeah, because... Uh, Oh, there's another one. Oh, the same oh, one. Yeah, it's the same guy. It will, um, oh, you know what it might have been? I think, he, I think he misspelled it the first time. Maybe I misspelled it. Nobody's getting on there because I'm the dumb, dumbass that didn't spell it right. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. You got uh, H A E D. Oh, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows how very particular I am about my grammar and spelling, is Steven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to have to. Um, We'll have to do that because I spelled it wrong. All right, I'm watching this time. I, I, I'm a supervise. I'll uh -huh. uh -huh. say it again. Uh -huh. uh, all right, looks good. Okay. Very good. There we and go. There we go. There, there we go. go. See when you spell right? Magic. See what Dundog done to me? <laughs> but uh, is there any, any other questions? Okay, here you go. Looking for Northern Snake Catch Tackle Shop. That sells bushel baskets with lids. Oh. This may not pertain to you, your topic. Do we, have, we have bushel baskets in here? Yeah, bushel baskets. No? Okay. No, he's got. The... Yeah, a lot, a lot of them, they've been abused. Most of the people that are making them, they've made so many during the summertime mm -hmm. that they're probably just stocking up before everybody else will um, stock up. Um, when I'll add to the, I think I can remove me. We'll add my my face back there again. The um, so is there any anybody have a? I want a good question for him. You know something because, all right, I'll give you one right there. I'm gonna do a this or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this from Sammy Hagar. Sammy Hagar has a thing he does with his musicians. And um, I didn't come up with a lot of them because I, I got, I, I was stressed out about this yesterday. Um, but if you had to pick, would you pick a frog or Busby? Frog. All right. Eastern Shore, Western Shore. Oh, that's tough. Because the fishing over here is, is not is, bad. Is, is someone else paying for my gas money? Nope. Damn it. You're wait, <laughs> you, you should be good soon. What time of year? <laughs> huh? What time of year? Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, Spring. I'm gonna say spring. Eastern Shore. Eastern Shore. Eastern Shore. This warms up faster. Yep. For a fact. <laughs> for a fact. And I, I mean, honestly, like if it was equidistant for me, or if I lived on the Eastern Shore, I would fish the Eastern Shore almost exclusively. The only reason I haven't fished it much this past year. I got some good fishing where you're at. Are you I, afraid to bank? You're I, not even in the. I, I got. I got some good, excellent fishing here, local to me. So, like you know, spending you know two hours and adding all the miles to my truck, and then paying for all the gas money for the Eastern Shore. And I love the Eastern Shore. I, I love immersing myself in that kind of isolated environment where I'm not hearing trucks and cars buzzing by. Where like we got here, you know, where I'm not hearing explosions or any any kind of nonsense. You know, I just I love getting out there into like true nature. But it's a long drive. 
It's especially if you're trying to be there at like first light in the summer, you're waking up at like 2.30 a.m. Yep. and be on the road by three if you want to yep. be there by first light. You know, for at, least yep. from, at least from where I'm leaving from. So yeah, it's, I, uh, I, it, it not, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm just, I'm just saying I have other options now. That's where I kind of, you know, when I moved down there and I'm like 40 minutes from Blackwater. So it's not, it's a really nice, it's a nice trip. I'm, I'm 15 minutes from Marshy Hope. Yep. And the child tank actually has got some, it, it, I can't believe I just told this. Here, here, comes, the, here comes the army. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but the thing about the Marshy Hope and the thing yeah. about the chop tank and even um, uh, I'm mean, shark town and stuff. I mean, you got some current there you got to deal with. So if you're in a kayak, yeah. if you don't have a motor or you don't have a pedal drive, if you don't hit the tides right, like I said, I always tell you about if you want to go to the Marshy Hope, yep. you know, you want to make sure that you got outgoing tide because then when you're done, you can swim that incoming, you can paddle that incoming tide back to where you were. Yep. Because that the tide rolls. And someone asked me just the other day, is like, hey, you know, I'm over in the Nanticoke area. Like, I'm looking at getting a boat or a kayak. Which do you recommend? And I'm a kayak guy. I recommend a boat because the Nanticoke over there, that tide rips. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, that, that tide rips over there. Like, it's, and honestly, like a lot of the pad fields you have over there on the like Nanticoke and the Marshy Hope, a lot of those are completely dry. When your tide goes completely out, I hardly ever fish for bad. I would, yeah. But even I, I would if I'm fishing them. I, I fish more lay downs and water because, yep. I mean, I don't find hard any bass on them weed pads. If you go on the inside to the bank, like if you got a, a weed pad and the yep. tide tides up, if you can get on the other side of the pads, yep. to where the bank is, yeah, that's kind of better. Yep. Um, but if you're going to, I mean, it's mainly you're going to be fishing. You know, I'm more of a bass fisherman. Um, but. That's the way I look at it. But the thing is, is that, man, it's, it took me a while to learn because yeah. when you fish, I usually fish the gunpowder. Yep. I'm, I'm a guy that fish Seneca, gunpowder, um, right out there, Joppa Town, yep. up around in that area. You know, the tide's moving, but it's, you don't really notice it until it's kind of like down. Yeah, it, it's, it's not pushing you like it does there. Like it's, it, it's, it's a different kind of tide over there. And, the, but the good thing about them kind of rivers is that the, if you can almost fish the same way all year long. Yeah. You can still throw your your crank baits and you don't have to slow down to a, a freaking Cinco or anything. I freaking hate Cinco, man. but they, <laughs> but I've lost a lot of money not fishing because they'll, right. they'll catch fish. You damn right, they catch fish. Um, all right, let's see let's see what we got here. This guy here, what's the best way? To, let me tell you what. If you want an easy way to, to, to cook snakehead, and I've done it already. I, it, it's it's a Maryland way. Mm -hmm. Just puts a little bit of butter and put some Old Bay on it. And honestly, if you're going to eat snakehead for the first time, I think that's probably the way I'd go. Because, like, do, do something simple. Like, familiarize yourself with the fish itself first and then get crazy with it. Because there's a lot you can do with snakehead. I mean, you can blacken it and stuff. But I, I love to blacken it. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of folks love to kind of dice it up, bread it, and make, you know, buffalo snakehead nuggets. Like, that's got to be one of the top answers out there if you're going to ask people for a snakehead recipe. They are excellent. Um, for me personally... I love to grill them. I like to grill them in kind of like a foil pack. I, I'll put them in there with like some shrimp, like shrimp, sausage, kind of a cream-based sauce, and just let it kind of cook in there. And that's freaking delicious. Absolutely delicious. A lot of folks actually grill their snakehead whole. Like if you go and you can get a lot of great Asian recipes because, you know, that's where snakehead come from, you know, right. it is Asia. Primarily, at least, the, at least the northern snakehead, the kind of species we're talking about here. They have some great recipes over there. The only reason I don't grill my snakehead whole is that the day that my wife or kids go to eat it and they find a parasite, which is nothing wrong with them. I want to be clear. Like right. the DNRs come out, like occasionally they have some, a few worms in them. As long as you fully cook it, you're completely fine. <laughs> but the day that my family opens up a snakehead and finds parasites in it is the day I won't be able to get a new snakehead anymore. So well, you know, <laughs> it's like that, that's all I, I fillet it. I check, make sure, remove <laughs> anything. And then it's a clean fillet. But it's, I, I go through this with my wife and it drives me crazy because her mom is one of them ones that you, I, I don't, I won't, I, I won't take her to different restaurants Yeah, because she just, she's very basic. She looks, she's, she's 70 some years old. She's meat and potatoes. Don't like none of the fancy stuff. <laughs> but my wife kind of has her in her, you know, mm -hmm. that she won't eat fish. She says she used to eat it all the time. She won't eat it. And I got, sea bass it's a very clean tasty yeah, fish it's very clean stuff it with some crab meat oh boy you know because we got plenty of crab meat in that freezer you know we do crabs and we got about 30 pounds of crab meat sitting in there and i'm not touching it but you know that silly woman will go into the cupboard and grab a can of tuna fish <laughs> and eat it with no mayonnaise 
and she won't eat it no more because I give her such a hard time. I'm like, but that's like the fishiest tasting fish yeah. there is. Yeah. If, I mean, if you cook rockfish right, I mean, it tastes like crab meat. Yep. You yeah, know, that's it's like the, it's. I mean, I guess that's one of the great things about snakehead. I'm, I'm going to get back to your rockfish. No, part. no, you're good, you're good. But what I'm saying is, like with snakehead, a lot of other fish, you have to do things like removing a bloodline, like you know, and stuff like that. If you want to avoid a fishy taste, especially with catfish, something like that, remove the bloodline, remove kind of that meat that's right around the belly, because if you don't, a lot of times you get that fishy taste. Snakehead, I've never had that, and I've never cut anything away from that meat, never. Yes, Bush River has snakehead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> Bush River definitely has snakehead. Every tributary to the Chesapeake Bay now has snakehead, and I mean, I mean the bush. I've had some great days on the bush. I, it's uh, I don't know if I want to tell you exactly which videos were on the bush or not, but yep. I've, I've had some great days on the bush river. Yeah, sure. they're 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 all because I've seen a lot now. Like I said, with all the grass and everything that comes in, like the Seneca River, because I showed you a spot. If you go, if you come in from the gunpowder and around. But you go into Seneca, yep. that first little creek that goes up there, there's a creek that if you go all, and I'm telling a secret spot, I love this spot, <laughs> but if you, it's, there's so much grass in there now. That's why I picked that place because I know it was absolutely hammered with grass. Oh, yeah. And, um, but if you that, go that's all, what you're looking for. if you go all the way to the back of this one creek, there's an old abandoned boat that's like, it's just the bottom hall now. Mm -hmm. The fish get up in there. Yeah. And um, I took Brandon, uh, the Baltimore angler. And I, I yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss him, man. I've seen him in so long. He's doing it. He's doing it. He does the drone thing now, and I keep in touch with him. I've been fishing with him a couple times. He's yep. fun to go out. Um, I took after we won that tournament. I'm, I'm sorry. After I won that tournament, <laughs> <laughs> keep it we. I sounded better. <laughs> yeah, uh, I took him to that spot. Man, we we struggled to late to get there. And it was kind of the same tide because we had outgoing tide, mm -hmm. or I forgot what tide it was. It just seemed like a bad tide, and it wasn't until late late to that that tournament it, it seemed like the oh, fish were getting yep. really active yep um and it was the same with him well um, i mean that speaks to one of my points i made earlier it's like the afternoon was the key right yeah and, and that's the thing you, you talk about spring that was like a late april tournament i think so that that period darn it i'm hitting the table again sorry y'all sorry <laughs> but that period from like noon till dark that's when that water warms to its maximum extent and that's when they started biting yeah yep. and it was and uh, the water was just just starting to come above the grass, mm -hmm. and I. It, oh, it, it was my my perfect. buddy. Perfect, and we got just that much water on the grass. Perfect. I had all my cameras all day, and then I, I just stopped videoing. Yep. And so, I called that one. That's when you catch him. And he, he when he went to grab the net to go pick it up, he was like, "Holy, look at that fish!" It was like a thirty-two. It was, 30, 20, it was like twenty-nine. I was, only 20, I was only twenty-nine and a half. Twenty-nine. Okay, that's half. still a big fish, though. Well, that day. Yeah. That day, because I mean, I think Warren had a twenty-seven incher that day. And that's what you were saying. Like, I mean, it was like we had how many people in the tournament? Like 40 or so, 30, 40. Yeah, it was good. And me. it was like, I think three people caught snake. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a fun tournament, but holy crap, that bite was. And the key, like you said, you found grass in late, thick. in late, a thick grass in late April. And that's where all the snakehead were. Because yeah. I mean, like where I was fishing, no grass. It's like <laughs> when I got there and there was no grass, I was like, this is not going to end well. Like this is not going to end well. I should probably not be here. <laughs> so, do you, so they got a question here. Do you do you notice any different uh, of the bite you know, um, difference in from last year's to this year's uh, as far, far as, the as the bite? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, and I, I think I made a video on this, but I would I was talking with a lot of folks in the snakehead community because we were it was there were some areas and there were a lot of big snakehead caught this year. I'm not going to say there weren't a lot of big snakehead caught, but by and large the bite was tougher in a lot of areas. And that's because of the weather we had, and it had a lot of downstream effects. So we had that really warm February, March, and early to mid-April. Really warm. Like to the point where those fish were pre-spawn, and I was catching them on top water in like late February, early March. Yeah, they got warm quick. So they got ready. The pre-spawn bite was coming together. I think a lot of fish had even begun making nests and laying eggs, and then the bottom fell out, right? And what that did, it didn't just reset their cycle. What it also did... It prevented the water from warming enough for the underwater grasses to grow in most areas. Like we had a lot of problems this year with underwater grasses almost across the entire bay. And then on top of that, not only does their habitat gone, that's where they hide. So they left them sitting ducks for the bow fishermen. The right. bow fishermen tore them up the spring. So the first crop of fry balls was pretty much destroyed. We didn't see good fry balls this year until like late July, I think late July, early August, really? you, usually when you get into that like kind of tail end of the first spawn, beginning of the second. 
So it was it was a wild year temperature wise. It had a lot of effects on the snakehead population. Sure. So I mean, I've caught good fish this year. I've caught good numbers. Was it as good as my previous year? No. And have a lot of people told me the same? Also, yes. And a lot of those guys who did really well, I know where a lot of them are fishing. I'm not going to say. A lot of those waters do not get anywhere near the same pressure as a lot of the other waters we generally fish. Well, that's kind of the whole point. Yeah. And that's the snake game. Your wife wants to know why you don't have 25 pounds of crab meat in your freezer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, in previous years, I, if you watch my channel, in previous years, I did a lot of crabbing. Uh, this past, yeah. oh, this, I'm sorry, this, this past year, I've hardly done any crabbing, man. And, and, you know, and, and much to my wife's chagrin, have I not done much crabbing this year? I, I kind of feel bad. So, so let me, I, I'm explaining. I know we're getting into, we're getting into a little bit over an hour and a half. So mm -hmm. the, when I decided to get into YouTube mm -hmm. and it was, it was four guys. Um, Dare Me for Dinner was kind of one that I thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, and he's the big YouTuber. And then I was watching Steven. He was fishing locally mm -hmm. um, out of his little green kayak with the yep. spitting in the kayak. Um, <laughs> that's when he started his journey doing all the snakehead stuff. Old Trophy Beach. And then it was Tommy Robinson from Amped Up Outdoors. I started watching. He played the music that I like. I love watching his videos, man. I wish he had time to make more. I really But, I mean, he has his own reasons and everything. He's a great guy. But, I mean, I used to love watching his videos. Yeah. yeah. And the, it was funny because he had a band on there called Death Angel. And that's a metal band we love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife's in the kitchen. She goes, who in the hell was playing Death Angel on the on the video? And that was Tommy. And uh, it was Brandon and Brandon, the, the Baltimore Angler. Yep. You three guys are really yep. why I started doing the YouTube thing. And um, I, I love watching all those dudes, man. So I had this great idea to contact all these guys. This is really like where I kind of met them. And I said, "You would you guys like to do a collaboration and let's do a video where each one of us can put it on our, our video where Stephen was the snakehead guy. I was the, the bass guy. Uh, Tommy was the, like doing the carp. Yep. Um, Brandon was the, was the, uh, catfish yep. and, uh, then Grant came at Grant came, who the hell invited Grant? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, Grant. And Grant came in, he was the salt, really the saltwater guy that did yep. the stripers and stuff. So I said, let's do a video. We'll do five tips. And then what ended up happening, we kind of all got together. We kind of do a little thing Yep. and then you want to know what the almost 75,000 views got on our, that Chesapeake, uh, Chesapeake outdoor sports channel. Was his crabbing video? Yep. I feel so bad. It was like 10, 10 tips for crabbing with like uh, those, those like four door chaps, and that that gets a uh, yeah. It, it had to have like forty thousand some views. It's got like seventy some thousand. seventy thousand. Yeah, now? like seventy some thousand views on that thing. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. And I was like, I wish I was like, man, I wish there was a way to get them views for him because I mean, it did, it didn't last too long, but it was it was fun. I thought it yep. was a great idea. Yeah. Um, because we have everybody had different kind of views, and it was getting everybody together to. You know fish once in a while we did we we had the turkey the turkey one we had we had the, the turkey video my memory is such trash I refresh my memory uh cambo tried to dive from a turkey and ran uh, into the gutter the freaking turkey <laughs> jesus that damn turkey i thought you meant we were like turkey hunting or something we went turkey no i mean yeah i went turkey hunting with my truck yeah, yeah. In, in, in the ditch in the ditch he went into the ditch well oh, that was that was i was lucky that day i was lucky that i went into the ditch and it wasn't just like uh just a general incline to a yeah. flat plane i probably would have rolled i probably would have rolled because <laughs> i was in the ditch like sideways like argh, just the, the whole right side of my truck just scraping against because it was a it was a bank like it came off the side of the road into a ditch went down then back up and the, my car was sideways just sliding along man I was, that, I was lucky. I was lucky. Yeah. And that's where you know, I've got to spend some time when we went and we've, we've actually talked. I mean, I drove them home that day. So it's, it's, it's been kind of a fun thing. I know we had, we had a little mis misunderstanding a little while ago, but hopefully that's all, all past, right? So uh, we won't go there then. If you don't remember. Yeah, I guess we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Or you probably wouldn't be here. No, it's good. Um, if you, let me go to see for a couple more things. Yep. He pulled a monster to see. I don't want to get past people monsters out of Bush River. Oh, for a fact, just yeah. purchased a home one mile away. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 good stuff, dude. That's good water. Stephen, Stephen, crab gonna, there well too. Well, well, see, Adrian. One of the things is that me and my one of the things that my wife absolutely is fanatic about mm -hmm. is summertime crabbing. Oh. So we go crabbing at least once a week. I mean, seriously, and I'm not even joking. You digging my once grave, bro? You digging my grave? And uh, <laughs> now I have offered him to come, but he just will. He just won't come. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, I offered him to come with uh, with your son to come out with my grandson, yep. which lives up in Joppa Town. Maybe get together and do some fishing, make a video with them guys. Mm -hmm. Um, it's be about the kids, but um, yeah. The uh, what's another one? What's the biggest fish you caught? My 
snakehead or regular fish my biggest yeah. fish is a 41 pound blue cat Oof. yeah uh, my biggest fish not counting sharks is probably was it, would it be my blue cat it probably would be my blue cat i think although i've caught some flatheads that are darn near as big right around the 50 pound mark yeah right around 50 pound mark if i spent more time blue like blue cat fishing with like buddies like a uh, brandon 410 commando and those guys i would have my you know my 70 80 90s by now but because they go don't they go on the potomac they, they go to the potomac they go to the james um even the rappahannock you hit the right spot you can pull a 70 out of there for sure i, I got to go there this year i, I yeah. went i met uh paulie Yep. I'm fishing out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. went down there to do some red fishing for the first time. Yep. And uh, and uh, just they were there was 30 inches swimming all around us. Just couldn't. We had when we first got to the first spot, there was breaking hot water fish everywhere. Uh, we could not get them to hit top water. And we so we were just using some swim baits. And there was he goes look there's look it's 30 inches swim bait bites. They weren't eating at all. Yep. And um, but you know what they did have down there? Good God, there were some blue crabs down there. Yep. They were swimming. Almost every pylon on all the thing, there was a freaking crab on it. That's how many crabs are down in Virginia. This is Rabbit Hat Red to Virginia. So we were on a saltwater end. I might kind of have fun. I'm going to go down yeah. there and do it with him. Paulie's been, me and Paulie's been, and he's only he's like 24 years old. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty young dude, you know? Um, I'm trying to get it. We're going to do a put in snake, hashtag snakehead. Good information on putting out sand. Love watching your videos and crabbing, fishing, and oysters. Yep, Steve is a great, yeah, he, He's always, every time I've asked him to come out, um, whether it be him being home, but it's the first time I've asked him to come in store. And he's, he's, all, he's always, he's always came out. He's always came out. And I, I can't, it. I can't appreciate him enough for it because right now the big thing, you know, for fishermen and what this has done, snakeheads has actually gotten people that really hasn't fished in a while yeah. to knock off the dust or you got kids out there now that are really looking to catch one of them snakeheads. And this is, yep. this is why, you know, I'm a, I'm, I got the best fisher mind in my head, you know, but I still don't. It's, let me put it this way: as long as I think that you know the bow fishermen, I think help keep keep, keep, keep the population in check. In yeah. check. Yeah, I hear um, you. I understand that. But we're living together. I mean, I've seen you. Yeah. You're, you're catching. We're catching bass right next to snakeheads in the same spots. Doing it, and it's not really. Yep. I mean, as much as we get him to dive into all the to the um, technical stuff. Seriously, if you, you can go out there and just try to catch some bat, it's the easiest thing. If you want to go catch a snakehead, you come down here to Edgemere Bait and Tackle, and you grab your, grab yourself some bull minnows that he gets from the um from the guys from down on Eastern Shore, and go get a bobber and just start throwing it out there. Yeah, there's a lot of local spots around here now to do it. They're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and it's it's, I mean it's it's really popular and. That's why I bring it. I know I got a buddy of mine. Can't stand him. He goes, <laughs> I can't believe you're bringing that guy on there and talking snakeheads. It's a, I'm like. It's, I mean, he's giving information. I mean, he, he does yeah. everything, but you know, I mean, at the end of the day, agree with me, disagree with me. The tactics that I give you to cast them are still, are still going to work. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, you agree, disagree about my whole, so like uh, estimates of their impact and all that. The tactics I give you are going to work regardless. He can always come out with us next year. There you go. There's the wife. Mm -hmm. Always saying, there's the Thank you, Lori. Somewhere on the video, I've caught snakehead somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i can tell you all that it's, it should be my video that i dropped next week i did get my wife on her first snakehead yeah she actually uh she beat me that day you'll see the video it's coming yeah well he he's his stream went out so oh okay. yeah, he, he was saying yeah you can explain real quick yeah so the, the difference between the bite from the last year to this year uh by and large everyone i've talked to has seen a reduction in the number of snakehead they've caught from 2022 to 2023 now, I think the biggest thing that had an impact on that is the fact that we had a very cold kind of May time frame, late April, May. Because again, the fish, they revved up on the pre-spawn bite. They started to make nests and lay eggs because March was so incredibly warm. Then the cold spell hit. It killed off that first crop. It then, the, because the water temp was so low, you get cloudier water. On top of that, you had no, less penetration from the sunlight, less grasses. You have less grasses you don't have the habitat to like to spawn in and you don't have habitat for the snakehead to hide in so as a result they're more exposed to bow fishing pressure mm -hmm. so they got wrecked those fish straight up got wrecked except for those areas that people know about i'm not even going to give a direction y'all know <laughs> if you know you know but there's certain areas within the state that have not been discovered yet by the snakehead crowd especially the bow fishermen and as a result those waters are producing some very big fish this year. 
very big fish. I saw a lot of big fish, but kind of post posted on, you know, various social media sites this year. And I think that's why. Good. Yep. I mean, that's good. All right. So if you want to win a lure, hashtag snakehead and spell it right. Less bites, but on average, the fish were bigger in my experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, part of that, you know, in terms of fisheries management, just for the folks out there, um, and it's like, I don't even advocate full catch and release for snakehead. And there's multiple reasons for that. But one of them is with any species, I don't care if it's snakehead, bass, catfish, whatever it is, the less to a point, the less fish you have in the environment, the larger they will grow because there's more food to go around to those lesser individuals that are in the environment. So, I mean, some harvest the fish and that, that's why, you know, and granted, if you hate snakehead, you're not going to agree with what I say, but that's, I essentially impose a slot harvest on myself for snakehead. Because for me, they're an excellent sport fish, and I want to catch a 36-plus-inch fish. I, I, that's a freaking blast. But to do that, you have to release those big breeders. Now, you might disagree. That's fine. But that's what I do, and that's why I do it. And a good thing, of, well, a good thing if you are going to eat the big ones, that they're not going to hold all the contaminants, that like a big blue cat or something. And, and that's the other thing. And, I mean, and I'll be honest. Like, I always try to be honest with y'all. Um, snakehead, based on the studies they've done, their bioaccumulation rates, like things like mercury that build up in the tissue and those larger specimens and any species, the bioaccumulation rates in snakehead are actually much lower. And they theorize that might be because they grow so quickly. But the bottom line is even, even a lot of the big ones are still safe for consumption. It's only when they get like 30 inches or bigger. And the, even then only in certain environments, like, you know, the dirtier parts of like the Potomac and Anacostia, things like that. That's when you probably don't want to eat those really big fish unless it's, unless it's like a necessity and trying to feed your family or something like that. But I mean, like a 32 inch blue cat. Yeah. You don't want to eat that man because of the bioaccumulate, the bioaccumulation rates in catfish are much higher. All right. Let me, um, I'm a, I'm a remove me and Steve. Oh, that's funny. Sleeper barbecue. Yeah. Sleeper oh, barbecue. Fantastic. We'll get you if you got already got frogs. We'll get you. Some, I'll get you something else. But we'll let you try some of these. Uh, these these new frogs here. Some of these other ones here. Um, and Rashawn, if Rashawn's lucky, we'll get him get one of his because he's he Rashawn over here. He makes his own lures. You want to talk mm -hmm. about your lures real quick? You want to talk about yours? Don't be all basketball. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got he's got bed head. That's what it is. Well, you got a couple here. We got a couple here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Um, the, the basilisk. Uh, I, yeah, you got one over there. All right, we, we are going to show you one infamous fishing frog. Over yeah, we're right going to show over you here real quick. That's I think that's probably Rashawn's favorite. Is uh, <laughs> is that basilisk man? It's a it's a great lure. He'll show it to you in a second. It's uh, similar to this. We got it. There we go. Basilisk. Uh oh. Mouse. So we got basilisk on either side here. It's kind of hard to see. I'm, we got, I'm we, showing it to the laptop instead yeah. of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> but basilisk, basilisk over here. And in the middle, you got the dragon mouse. What you got there, bro? Oh, yeah. And Rashawn, you know, it, this is like one of the OG lures, honestly, in the snakehead community is the Nothbury. Nothbury has been here since pretty much the beginning, at least since I started snakehead fishing, put it that way. And I mean, they were in the market for almost anybody else. And it's a solid lure. I've won a lot of tournaments in this lure. I've had some of my best days using this lure. Uh, the Nothbury has actually double blades on the back, and they create kind of a clicking noise as it's going through the water, as well as adding that flash to it. But the basilisk right here has this little kind of almost looks like a duck's foot blade on here. And the amount of noise that this little blade makes, you would, it's really surprising, dude. Aside from that, nice stout hooks, good hook angle, good compression on the frog body. I've seen Rashawn tear up many a fish on this bass list right here. I've caught on it too, but he freaking tears up on it. Oh, and the, the dragon hey, JJ. mouse. 
keep an eye out for updates to this too. I ain't going to drop any dimes over here for what he's got in the works. But this is the dragon mouse right here. He's got an update coming to it, and I'm pretty freaking excited, man. All, All right. right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've been going hour and a half. I'm, I'm pretty good. That's around about an hour and a half. Is you know, it's, it's been my uh, been my thing. And uh, like I said, it's I, I want to appreciate Brian and everybody letting me come here. Like I said, you come to Edgemere Bait and Tackle if you're looking for snakehead stuff. They will carry it. If you can't get it, I'm sure you can get in contact with any anybody here that makes the base that he can get you something. Um, and I really appreciate everybody everybody coming in and stopping in. I already hit it. Yeah, we already did the tournaments. Yep. I went through the dates and everything. Oh, did you? Yep. Yeah, we went through the dates. and I, I did okay today, man. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, just one final reminder, Legion Elite Series. We already covered it. Well, you know, you're, on a, you're, on a, you're on Facebook, Legion yeah. of Anglers. So on yes. Facebook. There you go. That's what I was going to say. If you want to find out the more details about the Legion of Anglers tournament series, the Legion Elite, go ahead, go to Facebook, Legion of Anglers. We have all the events on there with links over to Fishing Chaos. That's the platform we use for our tournaments. And like I said, sponsored by Delaware Paddle Sports and many others, but Delaware Paddle Sports, that championship round is a free, very nice high-end fishing kayak to that championship winner so. and my my wife would appreciate if you would like to sponsor the tackle shop podcast there you go that'll uh, delaware paddle sports yeah all right <laughs> i'll talk to john <laughs> all right everybody thank you for stopping by i want to thank steven i want to thank brian everybody for stopping by and sleeper barbecue came here lance came down here to hang out he how long two hours at two and a half hours he mm. Yeah, when you said when you said that, I was like, yeah, I was, I would have texted, yeah, nah. I pointed out to him, I was like, you see that right there? Yeah, I was like, what's going Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad, you, I'm, I'm glad you came. I'm surprised, but it's, that's awesome, man. Yep. I, I appreciate you coming down. Well, this is oh, where, yeah. this is where um, Bethel oh, yeah. Steel, when they made all the big ships doing World War yeah. One, World War Two. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of. That's where they down here is where they where the big giant Amazon is now. Used to be all nothing but factories where um. They used to make the ships for the wars down here. Fort Carroll? Fort Carroll. That's that's the um, you know, when you talk about the Star Spangled Banner and stuff like that, you know, you're that right there is where they put cannons in. So when it come out the bay, that's where they used to hang all their uh the the cannons and everything for to protect uh Fort Howard. Yeah, I, I mean in order to go any farther at the Patapsco and get to the main port, you had to go through there, and that's a funnel point where they would just sit there and blast them. Yep. Yeah. That's old fort. Somebody, a couple, couple people bought it. Um, if you go over to Key Bridge, if you're coming in from there into Dundalk and you come into the Key Bridge, if you're coming into Dundalk, if you look off to the right, there's this big octagon looking um, island out there. And that used to be where the forces would sit out there with cannons and blow up British any, ships. And any stuff. ships are to be here. Yep. Coming in. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, I so. appreciate you coming up there. We're going to go. We're going to rock on. Hey, check out all their next ones. I'm hey, the, January 6th. January 6th, I'll be at Bay Country Crab and Supply. I will have Captain Boomies out here. Um, she's a female captain. We got Rachel coming out. And I got two I got two guys coming out that two guys are very popular right now um, in the crabbing, crabbing guys. We're going to be going to Fish Bones in Pasadena. Um, so we got two big guys. The date hasn't been set yet. Um, once we get the date set up, then I'll tell everybody who's coming. All right. All right. See you guys.